So this video is dedicated to poll work ideas for at-home training. Just a few kind of left of center ideas of how to use polls uh, into a training with your horse. This is not like correct classical training. This is like training for recreational horses and the unique uh, scenarios recreational horses will come up against. So the goals here are agility, variability, joint and soft tissue integrity, fun of course, confidence boosting, rehabilitation purposes, and sure footedness. So the first one we've got I like to call the forest, and this is quite a difficult arrangement, but I like to start with it because just to get us thinking about using poles in different ways than what we typically see in classical schooling. So we are arranging poles in an ever increasingly complex and random array, random. Have fun and let your creativity run wild. So we want to simulate nature. Imagine that you found yourself in the backwoods and there was a stack of twigs, sticks and logs and both you and your horse needed to navigate it. The goal is to stay calm while negotiating a confusing and complex footing challenge. See how many different lines of approach you can make to the poles. And this is key with this exercise because there is sort of no limit to how many lines of approach and navigation you could use with this kind of arrangement. Um, and you want to see how many different ways your horse can move over them, negotiate them and clear them. So don't only go straight over it in a line, but as you can see here by my arrows, you can go halfway into it and then do a turn whilst you're into it and then come back the way you've come. You could do an easy curve through it. You could do anything you want. Important though is to go slow, go at a walk, and halt sometimes in the hardest section of your arrangement. This is like that board game twister, but for horses. Um, what I like to do though, if we're gonna have like a random arrangement like this, is to have like a sort of cluster in the center and it sort of becomes more and more sparse towards the outside. That's generally what I tend to do, but by, by all means, experiment here with this one. And the next one we have I call the starfish. So this is a level of moderate to difficult, depending on what pace you're choosing. This one's a little bit more organized. So we have a central square divided into diagonal halves. Doesn't matter which way you divide the diagonals, but I do prefer diagonals rather than halfway through into rectangles with corresponding spokes at the corners and at the mid lengths of the square. Challenge with variety and again how many different ways you can approach this. We want to work on changing reins, we want to work on straightness, leg yields, quick changes of reins and sure footedness with a more forward movement. This can be done at all paces so you can even canter this like in a circle around the outside and you can even raise the spokes into cavaletti for increased challenge. So the spokes on the exterior, you can raise them, either the short end or the long end, you can raise them every second or all of them if you like for an increased challenge. This is really good for horses that are starting to be prepared for jumps, um, if that's something you want to do. And it's a lot of fun to be done at a trot in half seat, okay? And the next one we have I call the S-Bend. So this is easy to moderate in difficulty. This is really good for horses that need to slow down and gain more control over their bodies. So horses that like to rush, I don't recommend the starfish, I would recommend the S-Bend. So try walking through. So the obvious solution would just be to walk through this corridor whilst respecting the boundaries and footfall, but then back up the way that you came in. That's really difficult and a lot of horses just can't do that. So that's really a good challenge for us. Less obviously, you can also use this for a variety of loose schooling at the trot as any obstacle, any obstacle at all that will engage the hocks and lift the feet is advantageous for the horse. So you can move over this at a diagonal as I've suggested here by the arrows or straight as I've suggested here by the arrows or you could even use it as a corner or curves. You know, there's there's no limit here to how many ways you can approach this. 
The next one is called the barcode. So this has got a moderate level of difficulty because we're really gonna be working a bit more with speed and a lot more with straightness and precision. So this is very different exercise to the forest or the starfish, right? So we want a line up of parallel poles and you can have different lengths of poles in case there's a refusal. So if the horse suddenly goes left or right, having those different lengths can still get some kind of engagement as they exit the exercise. Um, so you want diagonal poles connecting to raised cavaletti in the center of this arrangement. And those brown poles I've got at the start and the finish, you can have an unlimited number of those leading up to this kind of an arrangement. I've just got one here on either side as an example. Um, and you should space these at your horse's extended trot length. So lunge your horse first in their extended trot and then measure those distances and that's the distance you place these poles for your individual animal. The horse should lift and reach lightly out of balance to clear these poles. So they should be stretching to be able to clear them and you want to walk your horse through this exercise first to make sure they're really confident about moving over them. So and this exercise is called the arch. So it's quite an easy one. It's a good one to start with. We have an arch of poles. You want the short ended distance to be at the collected trot stride. So again, lunge your horse at a steady balanced collected trot and measure their footfalls. And that's the distance that you mark the short side or the collected side at. And the long end or the extended stretched distance of this arch will be at the rolling canter. So lunge your horse at a nice canter, not rushing, but not too collected, just a nice rocking horse canter, and then measure that stride. And that's the width you space them out at that end. Um, of course, you can guesstimate that if you don't want to be measuring your horse's lunge, uh, lunge work. But we are going to be doing this at a trot so that you can do a collected trot on the short end of the arch or extended trot on the wide arch or canter on the wide arch. We're working on leg yielding and working on straightness and staying within the rectangle at a curve. You can even use raised cavaletti on the short end every second pole for increased difficulty. And this one I'm calling a piece of cake. It's one I've used for a very long time. It's really great in kids' lessons. It gives you a lot of confidence. So apart from being used as a very simple trot, walk, canter in a corner for increased engagement, this can very quickly teach a weight shift to the hindquarters and a thoracic sling lift and thoracic sling open as well, which a lot of horses really miss that opening of their chest, not only contracting and lifting it, that's really important for shoulder health. And this can also teach leg yielding, uh, good rein feel, focus, nuance, a lot more. It's a really great exercise. So you're supposed to walk your horse down the straight end and stop with their feet as close to the pointy end as possible. Then indicating with your inside rein, the horse is to exit this without stepping over the poles by shifting their weight onto the hindquarters and going out the open side. I happen to have a really old video of one of my uh, clients back in Poland. This is a super old video I dug up uh, where I happened to film this exercise. Let's have a look. Yep. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Good. So this was an old jumping horse who was attempting this exercise. Would be better if he didn't back up before he exited, if he just shifted the weight onto the hindquarters, but I don't mind at all uh, that he did. And you're wanting him or her to open the front legs to the side so that they can exit. This was really difficult for this horse because he had very stiff contracted chest. He really couldn't move his legs laterally in the front at all. And using lateral movements where he crosses his legs over themselves on the front actually will make him more tight because what we need him to do actually is open his chest rather than close it. So this is a really good exercise for horses with shoulder issues, thoracic issues, trapezius issues, uh, thoracic sling stiffness, all that sort of stuff. So. This was a really old video, but I thought I'd just throw it in here. So I hope that was helpful for you. 
have fun trying these things at home. These are just a few suggestions of different ways polls can be used to enhance your at-home training. There is a never-ending variety. These are just a few ideas and great starting points, and I encourage you to work on your creativity with polls. Have fun and stay safe.